Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about the clinical uses of steroid and steroid therapy. Steroid is a hormone which is produced in our adrenal gland. There are different types of steroids you can see here. Mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, glucocorticoids like cortisol, androgens, catecholamines. We are going to discuss about mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoids. Others also steroids, but we are not going to discuss that because their actions are entirely different. Here the glucocoid, corticoid and mineralocorticoid drugs which are used in clinical practice uh, like patient who is having chronic inflammation, acute severe inflammation, hypotension, so many conditions we are using steroids in our clinical practice. So there will be a lot of doubts regarding the use of steroids, how to use, when to start, what are the complications, how do you tackle the complications, so many things, doubts are there for doctors. So now we will see the actions of glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids increases actions uh, like uh, gluconeogenesis, glycogen deposition, protein catabolism, fat deposition, sodium retention, potassium loss, free water clearance, uric acid production, neutrophil production. So whenever we give steroids, we can see the patient is developing diabetes, so high blood sugar, water retention, edema, sodium retention is one of the cause for water retention, but this drug itself can produce water retention, hypokalemia, potassium loss. Then neutrophil production, that is one important thing we can, when we are starting steroids in any patients in ER or ICU, you can see the WBC counts are elevated in many patients. Actually these elevated counts are not due to the infection or some other problem, it is due to the steroid. Okay. So any patient who is admitted with asthma, if you give steroids, one or two day steroids, third day you can see WBC counts are elevated. Normally when in an infection or asthmatic patient, when the counts are elevated, we always think that it is due to a bacterial infection. But in a patient who is getting steroids, most of the time the elevation in counts are due to steroids. So we should be very careful when we are interpreting this type of results. Now it can also inhibit some functions like host response to infection, delayed hypersensitivity. Lymphocyte transformation, lymphocyte production, eosinophil production, protein synthesis. So again, whenever we, we are giving steroids, it acutely reduces inflammation. Like somebody is having asthma, if you give steroids, it reduces the inflammation. And somebody is having allergy, it reduces the hypersensitivity, eosinophil count. And uh, it can also produce the reduction in the antibodies in our body. So antibody mediated disorders also we can treat with the steroids. Now these are the actions of steroids. Eosinophils numbers are reduced, T lymphocytes reduce cytokines, mast cells reduce numbers, they have major role in asthma, macrophages they have role in inf infection and inflammation, cytokines are reduced. Dendritic cells, numbers are reduced. All these cells have major role in infection, inflammation and allergy. Epithelial cells, it reduces the cytokine mediators. Endothelial cells, it reduces the leak. Airway smooth muscles, reduces the contraction and reduce, uh, in, in, uh, it also relaxes the muscles. Mucus gland, it reduces the secretions. So altogether it has got an anti-inflammatory action and anti-secretory action, anti-allergic action. But it has got its own side effects that also we have seen. Now we can see what are the common uses of glucocorticoids. So in clinical practice the commonest use of 
steroid is in asthma. So any patient who is coming with acute severe asthma, we start with injection steroids or oral steroids. We have to understand that both injections and oral steroids have same bioavailability but in patients who is having breathing difficulty will not be able to give oral tablets so we start injections and some patients we also treat with nebulized, nebulized steroids like budazonide or inhaled steroids that also can be uh, can that also can act as a anti-inflammatory drug cardiac conditions routinely we don't use uh, steroids in cardiac conditions but patient who is having tubercular pericarditis which can produce constrictive pericarditis to prevent that fibrosis we can start steroids post myocardial syndrome or dressler syndrome we can use steroids and some pericardial effusions also we can use steroids massive pericardial effusion we can use steroids to prevent constrictive pericarditis renal diseases mainly immune mediated diseases of the kidney like glomerulonephritis, nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome, it is very, very useful because most of the nephrotic syndrome are steroid responsive. Then autoimmune hepatitis, especially in female patients, you can get autoimmune hepatitis. They respond very well to steroids. Other rheumatological conditions, they are the major uh, group of diseases where steroids are very useful. SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, polymyalgia rheumatica cranial arthritis all these inflammatory conditions steroids are used as a bridge therapy between the definitive treatment from the uh, NSAID so initially any patient who is having acute rheumatoid arthritis or SLE we start with minimal drugs like uh, uh, paracetamol for pain for as example we can take the arthritis we start with paracetamol or NSAIDs but we cannot continue for a longer time for these drugs but we also start steroids to reduce the inflammation but we know that steroids also cannot be continued for a long period because it has got its own side effect then we'll start anti uh, anti rheumatoid drugs dmrs so steroids can be started initially then dmrs can be started dmrs normally take some time to act but steroids act immediately so steroids will be started it starts action immediately then we will be also starting disease modifying anti rheumatoid drugs when they come into picture or action we can slowly withdraw the steroids neurological diseases like uh, vasculitis or acute disseminated encephalomyelitis or we can use steroids but in acute conditions in cerebral edema, we can use steroids. We mainly use dexamethasone in CNS because dexamethasone is one type of steroid. It crosses the blood-brain barrier very easily. Whereas other steroids have got some defect in this blood-brain barrier crossing. But methyl prednisolone and all still we use in uh, brain condition. But commonly use we use dexamethasone uh, that has got a better penetration to uh, brain. Skin disease, fembigus and eczema, we can use steroids. Tumors, many types of steroid, tumors, we use uh, steroids, especially in large lymph nodes where steroids can be given and acutely the size of the lymph nodes will come down. The compressive uh, problem of lymph nodes can easily be controlled. And TB, we have various, uh, uh, various types of TBs where we can use steroids, uh, large pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, uh, meningitis, uh, eye involvement, genital TB and especially in emergency room we use uh, in adrenalitis. So any TB patient coming with hypotension and shock, we have to think that it is mostly due to TB infiltration of adrenal gland and it is due to adrenalitis. The treatment of that is you can start with fluids, then noradrenaline can be given but the main treatment is steroids so in adrenalitis steroid dose is slightly different from uh, what you give in asthma asthma you give a single dose of steroid high high dose of steroid as a single injection whereas in adrenalitis you have to give a replacement therapy you have to give four times daily injections of hydrocortisone that is a treatment of choice in adrenalitis 
Now, whenever we start steroids in a patient who is having rheumatoid arthritis or SLE, that means you are going to start the steroid for a longer period, not like asthma. Asthma, we give one or two days steroids. When we st- when the patient improves, we stop it. But in rheumatoid arthritis or SLE, we may have to give uh, six or seven weeks or it may take even more than that. In that condition, we have to always rule out tuberculosis. We take a chest x-ray and rule out tuberculosis. Otherwise, tuberculosis can flare up. Diabetes should be ruled out before starting steroids. And uh, family history can be taken for both diabetes and hypertension. Patient can have high BP after steroids, after starting steroids because it has got a water and salt retention activity. So, BP can increase. Osteoporosis can increase with steroids, so we have to be very careful, we have to give vitamin D, calcium or alendronate drugs like that. GI ulcers are also very important contraindication for steroids because steroids can induce gastritis, esophagitis, uh, other problems. Diflexacort is one type of steroids, they are safe in gastric side effects but not completely safe but comparing with other steroids Diflexacort is safer. Psychological disorder very rarely you can uh, get patients who is having steroid psychosis. After starting steroids some patients can develop acute delirium, uh, they, they may not get sleep. All these things are possible in steroids. Now again whatever we discussed we have to be very careful in some conditions uh, uh, where the patient is already having, steroids should be uh, used with caution. Same like that, these patients can have, uh, can develop these problems due to steroids. Like patient can have adrenal suppression and suddenly if you withdraw steroids, patient can go to adrenal failure. Like patient is on steroids for a long time, maybe uh, uh, two, uh, two months or three months patient is on a type of steroid like dexamethasone or hydrocortisone. Suddenly, if we are withdrawing steroids, patient can develop hypotension, shock, diarrhea and all. So, we have to be very careful when we are withdrawing steroids. If the patient is on long term steroids, we have to reduce the dose and taper down and stop it. Other symptoms are, other uh, problems are like what we discussed in the previous slide. GI ulcers, blood pressure can increase, polyuria, nocturia. Uh, proximal myopathy is very very important. Many patients who is, who is having chronic steroid use, they, can, they have proximal myopathy. They will not be able to get up from squatting position. That is the first sign of proximal myopathy. Weight gain, diabetes, that is another important problem of steroid. Osteoporosis, fractures and uh, necrosis of uh, hip, pathological fractures. Thinning of skin, easy bruising, that is also seen in steroids. Patient can develop cataract in chronically uh, on steroids. And another important problem is patient can develop lot of infections because steroids reduces the immunity in our body. So, they are prone for infections. So, that is also there. Now, therapeutic effects you can see here, steroids are used for immunosuppression, anti-inflammatory, reduced blood vessel permeability, anti-allergy, pain relief. Side effects are infections, proximal myopathies, osteoporosis, aseptic, necrosis of the femur, skin thinning, hyperglycemia, weight gain, fluid retention, Cushingoid appearance, adrenal insufficiency, cataracts, hypertension. So, these are the, this slide explains what is steroid, what are the effects, what are the side effects. But if you are using steroids cautiously, like uh, without, with, uh, with knowing all these effects and side effects, you can, it is a very good drug, but without knowing the side effects, if you are continuously using this drug, sometimes patient can develop lot of complications. Now, one of the problem of steroid is Cushing syndrome or Cushingoid feature. Patient can have weight gain, buffalo hump, facial edema, moon phase. So many complications can develop. 
like whatever we discussed uh, in the la last two three slides it is side effects so patient can develop side effects and one of the side effect is cushingoid uh, features it is not cushing syndrome as such it is cushingoid features patients on steroids very early itself they develop lot of acne they can develop facial puffiness water retention they can long term steroid use can produce buffalo hump that is due to fat accumulation on the back so so many abnormal problems can develop after chronic steroid use now whenever we start steroids for a longer period we have to also tackle the side effects so you can uh, try to avoid blood sugars high blood sugars like ad advised to take uh, lesser salt lesser wat water and reduce the sugar intake these are the important steps we have to do when the patient is on chronic steroid use so diet control is very very important so so that we can avoid uh, hypertension and diabetes and uh, to prevent gi ulcers we have to use proton pump inhibitors or h2 receptor blockers to prevent osteoporosis we have to give calcium vitamin d bisphosphonates aludronate soludronic acid all these things another important problem is infections so whenever the patient is on chronic steroids they have uh, they have potency for uh, 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 repeated infections so whenever we are suspecting infection immediate treatment is required and pcp prophylaxis is also very important you can uh, you, uh, like any other immunosuppressive suppressive regimes or uh, hiv all these conditions where the patient's immunity is very low we have to consider pcp pneumonia prophylaxis you can give bactrim ds one tablet daily uh, to prevent pcp pneumonia other vaccines also very important like uh, patient is immunocompromised so influenza vaccines h influenza pneumococcal all vaccines are very very important now whenever patient is on chronic steroid use when the patient Uh, undergo undergoing some surgery or stressful condition we will have to increase the dose of steroids for minor surgery hydrocortisone you can give 100 mg im where the patient is already on hydrocortisone maybe 100 uh, 10 mg tid but he is undergoing a surgery so he give a extra dose of steroids otherwise sometimes this patient can go to hypotension because of stress induced adrenal insufficiency major surgery hydrocortisone 100 mg 6th hourly that is very important either you can give 6th uh, hourly boluses or you can give it as an infusion 100 mg as an infusion both have similar actions you can see the equivalent doses of uh, glucocorticoids various steroid preparations are available you can see the chart here hydrocortisone 20 mg methylprednisolone 4 mg prednisolone 5 mg deflucosacort 6 mg cortisone 25 mg dexamethasone 0.5 mg so dexamethasone is a very powerful drug and the cost of the dexamethasone comparing with other steroids are very very cheaper also and it also penetrates csf without any problem only thing is its mineralocorticoid action is uh, less comparing with other steroids but at, as an anti inflammatory drug it is an excellent preparation so mineralocorticoid action is next important thing mineralocorticoid act action means it uh, it is a retention of sodium and that increases the retention of water so sodium and water retention is the action of uh, mineralocorticoid steroids and it also uh, uh, very useful for utilization of carbohydrate fat and protein but major uh, advantage is it produces retention of water and salt so it is used in treatment uh, if the patient is having hypotension hyponatremia and all we can give steroids and it it produces retention of salt and water uh, in in a sepsis or uh, some other steroid depleted condition fludrocortisone is another type of uh, mineralocorticoid almost all steroids will have some mineralocorticoid action but if you want an additional mineralocorticoid steroid then fludrocortisone cortisone is the choice
So, Diflexacort is very important drug that has got uh, uh, some advantages of other steroids because Diflexacort uh, has got lesser side effects, uh, GI side effects that is very important. Comparing with other uh, steroids, Diflexacort has got a lesser side effect. So, when we are using it for chronic uh, usage, you can avoid uh, GI side effects if you are using Diflexacort, but cost is uh, higher when we compare with similar type of steroids like dex dexamethasone or betamethasone. Now, you can see the glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid action here. Hydrocortisone, it is 1 and 1. Methylprednisolone, mineralocorticoid action is very less. Prednisolone also very less. Betamethasone, it is very, very less. Dexamethasone also very, very less. Whereas, anti-inflammatory action, you can see dexamethasone is having max maximum action than betamethasone. So, when we when we have to give uh, for a uh, anti-inflammatory property like somebody is having asthma or if there is a uh, inflammation in the joint, dexamethasone is a better drug comparing with other drugs. Whereas, if you want to give for uh, hypotension or uh, uh, shock, then hydrocortisone is a better drug when we are comparing with other steroids. That is because of the mineralocorticoid action of the hydrocortisone. That is why almost all replacement therapy is by hydrocortisone and uh, in asthma, uh, dexamethasone is very commonly used. Now, whenever we start steroid for rheumatoid arthritis or SLE or any other condition, if the duration of the treatment is more than 2 weeks, we cannot suddenly withdraw the steroids. We have to taper the dose and steroid and stop it. Because if you are suddenly stopping steroid after a prolonged period, so suppose the patient is taking last 6 months on steroids, he will not have his own adrenaline or steroid uh, secretion from his body because external steroids we are supplying. Suddenly, if we are withdrawing the steroid support, patient can go to the complications of steroid insufficiency. Patient can have diarrhea, weakness. Uh, and uh, hypotension, shock, all these complications are there and patient, sometimes patient can present with altered behavior and seizures and all. So, steroids should not be sta uh, stopped abruptly if the patient is taking steroid for a longer period and if we are planning to stop steroids in two weeks, there is no need of tapering also. That is also very important. Like we are starting steroid for like uh, uh, 20 milligram uh, a tablet of uh, hydrocortisone or 100 milligram tablet of hydro hydrocortisone. We are continuing for two weeks, no need to taper, you can abruptly stop the uh, steroid. But if you are continuing for a longer period, more, like more than two weeks, then better to taper the dose and stop. Otherwise, patient can have complication like hypotension, shock and all. Now, this is a sample uh, for starting and stopping steroid. Like you can give 1 milligram per kg body weight of uh, prednisolone, like that is 60 milligram per day and slowly you can reduce. Every week 10 milligram you can reduce and ultimately you can stop the drug. So, sudden withdrawal is not possible when we are giving for a longer period more than 2 weeks. Another important way of giving steroid is pulse therapy like patient who is having a catastrophic effect of SLE or rheumatoid arthritis like severe joint inflammation. Even if we start disease modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs, it takes some time, it, it may take 2 to 3 weeks. By the time joint will be completely destroyed. So, to prevent that we start NSAIDs and steroid, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and steroids both will act immediately and steroid have got a higher potency that NSAIDs to reduce the inflammation. So, we give a uh, pulse dose of steroid. Pulse dose means normally we give methylprednisolone 1 gram into 3 days. 1 gram into 3 days. That is pulse therapy of methylprednisolone we routinely use in SLE, severe vasculitis, rheumatoid arthritis, acute flare. All these conditions we give pulse therapy of methylprednisolone. But we know that methylprednisolone cost is very high. So, we can even try dexamethasone. So, the, the dose of dexamethasone may be, may be injection dexamethasone 40 milligram per day. 
So, 1 gram methyl prednisolone or 40 milligram of dexamethasone are given in acute condition. They are known as pulse therapy. After 3 days, you can give 1 milligram per kg body weight prednisolone or equivalent doses of other steroids and they should be tapered over many days. Sudden withdrawal is not possible in this type of conditions. Now, there are some drugs, they are called as steroid sparing agents. Steroid sparing agents means, uh, you know that steroids can be used for a longer period in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE or various types of vasculitis, CNS vasculitis, CNS conditions. We give steroid for a longer period, but we know that it has got lot of side effects. So, we select some drugs, they are called as biologicals or uh, they are actually uh, act on specific uh, antibodies. So, these uh, monoclonal antibodies act against specific proteins in our body and that protein may be present in that type of inflammation. So, they are called as monoclonal antibodies or biological drugs which can act against inflammation. They will act only against that part of the inflammation. But whereas steroids is a general anti-inflammatory, throughout the body it acts, it may not act only on the specific site. Whereas this type of drugs act only on the specific sites, so that side effects also less comparing with steroids. They are called as steroid sparing agents. They are biological steroid sparing agents. Other steroid sparing agents are like methotrexate, uh, cyclophosphamide, leflonamide. They are also anti-inflammatory drugs, but they are not biological anti-inflammatory drugs. So, we have discussed about steroids in clinical practice. We know that we use a uh, lot of steroids in our clinical practice, especially in emergency medicine. Most of the patients require steroids like patient who is having severe asthma, severe COPD, hypotension, refractory sepsis and lot of other conditions, acute SLE flare-up, acute rheumatoid arthritis and uh, TB. Even in HIV patients also we use steroids like PCP pneumonia with severe, uh, severe hypoxemia, steroids are the mainstay treatment with Bactrim DS. So, steroids are very good, useful drug in emergency medicine, but we have to be very careful because we should also know the side effects of steroids. So, unknowingly if we are starting steroid for some patients and, and if you are not monitoring for the side effects definitely he will have complications. So, uh, steroid should be used with caution, but it is a very useful drug in both in emergency practice and uh, general medicine practice. So, we can continue the steroids, but during the course we have to monitor the patient for side effects of steroids and when the side effects occurs, we should know how to treat it. And one more thing is sudden withdrawal of steroid that is also very important. If you suddenly withdraw steroids, patient definitely develops uh, altered behavior, hypotension, hyponatremia, shock, all these complications can occur. In that condition, we have to give steroid supplementation. So, whenever adrenaline insufficiency occurs due to a primary adrenaline insufficiency or a, a drug withdrawal adrenaline insufficiency, we have to give hydrocortisone. So, normally we give hydrocortisone IV 50 milligram every 6th hourly. So, remember one more important thing, in an anti-inflammatory condition, steroids can be given as a single dose, but in replacement therapy, steroid has to be given in 4 time doses or continuous inf infl infusion. As an anti-inflammatory, when we are giving steroids, no need to split the doses, especially if you are giving uh, 2 doses morning and evening, it can even suppress the natural uh, steroid stimulation in our body. So, that should not be done. You have to give morning time, single dose is enough. Suppose you want to give 50 milligram of prednisolone, it has to be given in the morning itself. Never give it as 50 milligram uh, in divided doses, 50, like 25 milligram morning and 25 milligram evening. That should not be given for anti-inflammatory purposes. But if you want to give for replacement purposes, then it has to be given 4 times daily or 3 times daily. So, that is about steroid. Thank you.